Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Co, where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. Today we're going to be talking about my top recommendations for online cloud storage. Now, there might be a number of different reasons why you want online cloud storage, and namely uh, to store maybe external JavaScript files because Webflow, as you might know, Webflow sets a limit on the number of characters you can write in embed elements. But there could be other things like fonts or images or anything you want really that you can't use uh, Webflow's asset management for. And this teased me up for an episode I've got ready for you guys coming in the near future. So stay tuned for that. So really there are two main aspects to cloud storage. Firstly, obviously the actual storage of the assets themselves. But secondly, you want a CDM to serve those assets closer to the, the user and it caches those assets in that area. I've seen chatter of people using GitHub to store their assets and the issue with that is that it's not got a CDN in front of it. So it's not caching the assets and you're putting undue pressure on GitHub servers so they could block that IP or do something with it. Really you want that CDN in front of the server. This list compiles itself of services that both host and use a CDN, but it also has a very clear and manageable pricing structure. Pricing kind of sits in two ways, either per the amount of storage you use or a fixed monthly fee, which you'll get basically an amount of bandwidth. So it really comes down to really how much do you intend on people accessing that uh, those files? So if, if there's a lot of bandwidth being used, uh, but you only need a few assets, then it probably go for the option of paying per gigabyte of storage. Whereas if you know you need tons and tons and tons of gigabytes, but not a lot of traffic, you might go for the 60 month fee. Now I don't think I've seen in this list anything less than $5 a month, but again, I think you get a UX experience, you get a cleaner experience, and it's just sort of more catered towards our sort of needs. And like I say, they provide that CDM. Now my first recommendation, and we've kind of gone over this in the past, with my WebP before Webflow supported WebP uh, was AWS. Now, AWS has a service called S3 and admittedly, Amazon and all their services has the most awful, awful UX uh, are going basically and it really is a very very cheap way to do it the good thing about AWS S3 is that it actually charge you for the amount of gigabytes you use and again I'll put on the screen now the price per gigabyte and it really is nothing uh, you know I'd be surprised if you push any more than a, a oh hello hello Siri shut up I'd be surprised if you can push any more than say a few megabytes really, but it really comes down to how much you use. So it's mo it really is the most kind of flexible. So in the same ways, Google Cloud also have their own services. Now I will admit, I've not had any experience using Google Cloud's sort of S3 equivalent, but I can imagine given they're the two kind of competing companies here, that they're very, very much in similar in price in functionality and all the rest of it. So I've actually just taken a quick look at Google Firebase and actually that's a really good viable option instead of going through the configuration of Google Cloud and Google Cloud CDN. I would take a look at Firebase, the storage option that they have there because again you just upload your assets, you get a URL that you can access from that thing. Uh, there's a bit of configuration around allowing read but not write but it's a really non-techy way and I think it basically uses the same price as setting up manually. I'd probably recommend Firebase over AWS. If you don't want to get in too much into the techy stuff and I will, you know, I'll encourage you to explore it at the very least. There are other services that make it really digestible in the kind of you pay a monthly fee and you just get online storage of your assets. With that being said, the first option is DigitalOcean Spaces. Now the good thing about DigitalOcean Spaces is that it actually comes with a CDN. Unlike Google and AWS where you need to add a CDN, this one is very, very simple to add. Under the hood they are using AWS, uh, so they're probably using an S3 and I think this is a great option because $5 a month and again it's a very, very simple UI to use when it comes to uploading your assets. So that, that comes in the uh, second suggestion. Vulture, spelled V-U-L-T-R, is another one of my recommendations. Again, it's a $5 a month uh, fee. It's the same sort of stuff really. It comes down to your preference when it comes to the UI 
buy, kind of how easy it is to use. But ultimately, you upload your assets and you're given a HTTPS URL where you're able to access that asset. And finally, just before we wrap up and get into using some of these tools, I just wanted to cover Cloudinary. Now, again, I'm gonna to be totally honest, and I haven't actually used Cloudinary, but it's been on my radar for quite a while. Cloudinary is great because it's a service that stores your, I think it's just uh, image and video assets. I'm not too sure, at least uh, image assets for certain. And what's great about it is that in the URL, you can pass query parameters, which you can dictate like the size of it, the image compression, the file format and various things like that. It's super, super flexible. But one of the reasons why I haven't used it is just because it's so damn expensive. So I would strongly recommend giving Cloudinary a shot. And if I get a chance, I'll add some B-roll of me maybe using it or playing around with it. Uh, but Cloudinary for image assets is actually a really viable solution, I think. So AWS S3 is pretty simple. If you search S3 inside of the search panel up here, you'll go through to what's known as buckets, okay? And you're gonna to wanna to create a new bucket. You can give this, it needs to be unique, but I would recommend giving it the domain name of your, your website. So it'll be mydomain.com, whatever. Uh, that's probably already taken. So we're just gonna put some random numbers here. Now you wanna select your region. And again, because it's gonna be served from a CDN, it really doesn't matter too much. Uh, this can be all left the same and you'll see here it's got block all public ac assets, access so we don't actually want to do that we want to untick that and it warns us that this will be public and that is all fine uh, versioning is fine manage key this is all fine let's just double check here object lock that seems just fine to me so I create my bucket and go into my bucket and it's just a case of now if I get an, a CSS file, CSS, we can upload that. And then we can open this and you can see there's my CSS file available on, if we paste that, HTTPS. So jumping into DigitalOcean now, on the side here you'll see spaces and create space bucket now again it's all on s3 so we get all of these um amazon s3 stuff content delivery network we absolutely want that um finalize and create choose a new expert that's my domain so there we go there's, there's that five dollars a month and once again we're able just to upload our css files and copy our url okay probably probably because i had dot com in the actual name of the bucket there so it's just causing some problems but uh yeah i hope that was helpful I'll have a look at some of the links below there might be some credits available for you to try out these services and uh, see what works for you